Hi, Gary here. You know, when I was a cadet at West Point, we were on an exercise where we're walking three abreast down this road, and they say, watch out for the enemy. And all of a sudden, the whole world erupts. Machine guns going off, small arms, fire, hand grenade, and artillery simulators. We froze. We didn't know what to do. And we had the classic, as the instructor said to us, dip, die in place because of no action. And then what they said was what you should have done is drop to the ground, thrown hand grenades, and then in the kill zone, run towards the enemy. And I'm thinking, I want to run away. You know, this is my flight response, fight or flight response. And that's what happens to us many times in those chaotic situations in life. You know, the 2003 Chicago E2 nightclub stampede where 21 people were killed, or in 1971 in Glasgow, uh, Scotland, where 66 people were killed in, in, a, in a soccer event where people were rushing in and out of the stadium. You know, these are all classic flight responses where really disastrous results take place. You know, in our own lives, you know, maybe you're in that older crowd where you're feeling some chest pains and they persist for about an hour and you run over to the clinic and they do some diagnostics and they find out uh, everything's okay. You, you really just had a pulled rib muscle or, you know, indigestion or some other thing that had nothing to do with your heart. But better safe than sorry, right? Well, we go through life with lots of things happening, lots of messaging. If you stand in, in Times Square and you look around for five minutes, you'll see neon signs and streaming digital, and you'll see cabs and buses with all sorts of cornucopia of messages. And it really will give you a headache. There's so many. And, and the researchers say we get 300 to 10,000 messages thrown at us on a daily basis. It's phenomenal. So when it comes to money and taxes and the state and everything else, it's extremely complicated, especially with the rules and regulations and so forth. So we go through life trying to make good decisions, and we really run against our filters. There really are three filters. The first one is that experience filter. It's your you know, five, six, seven decades on the planet where you've got a lot of experiences. And so you, as you go through life, you find out there's fewer nevers and always, and you're a little more cautious and deliberative and thoughtful and a little more set in your ways. So it's a little uh, more difficult when new stuff comes along to how to handle it and deal with it. But that first cut with the wisdom you've been able to uh, gain over your life is usually pretty good. But in steps number two, diagnostics. Okay, again, go back to those chest pains, right? Same thing, it's an hour you run in and sure enough they do an EKG and another test and they find out you've got 85 percentage blockage in one uh, artery and 95 percent in another and within a few days you're in for a coronary bypass and you're really happy. You listened to yourself and, and made that decision and lived to see another day. Or it's early 1999, you're hearing messages from Federal Reserve Chairman Greenspan about a rational exuberance of the market. And Warren Buffett is talking about value is value. It's not different this time. And you're kind of wondering, maybe your portfolio's a little bit off. And so you go to a financial advisor, and he or she looks at your portfolio and sees it's all on dot coms and tech stocks, and it's, it's a disaster waiting to happen. You diversify out of it, and of course, the boom bust takes place, and you're happy that you listened to yourself, your heart, about this whole thing. And that's the next filter, the most important filter, the filter that actually we make all our decisions from, our emotional filter. You know, in 2011, Walter Isaacson wrote a book, biography, about Steve Jobs. And in there, he talked about Steve being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer tumor uh, that his doctors recommended be removed immediately. Uh, Steve waited for nine months, and then the the, the tumor got larger and then he had to remove. Now, Steve had uh, understood the first two signs and he had a kind of an unconventional way of thinking and along those emotional lines of thinking, he waited that time frame, not certain, but it may have cost him his life. But that's where we do make our decisions is in this emotional center uh, about who we are. And it's why many times we ask lots and lots of questions of you as well as your other trusted advisors to find out how things are connected because we know that's where the decision making takes place is in that final one. So this comes down to biology. We look at the brain and we have the neocortex and this is this is really where all rational thought and language lies and beneath that is the limbic part of our brain. This is where we have our behavior and our feelings and where we do make our decisions. However, 
the limbic part of our brain has no capacity for language. It has no way of us being able to speak or, or say what it is we're really believing. So we'll say something like, my gut says so, or it's, it's, it's in, I feel it's the right thing to do, or I, I don't feel it in my heart. You know, these various ways we're trying to explain what's coming out of this emotional part of our brain. And this third filter then relies on other aspects of what's going on in our life. And so when you sit down with your uh, trusted CPA um, or your attentive advisor, or your pedigreed attorney, you have this long-term relationship and connectivity with these advisors that they've asked you a lot of these questions and are connecting all these pieces together so that it will feel right when you make a decision it's very complicated with all these various things that are taking place. You've been through your own experience filter, you've been through some diagnostics, and ultimately you make this decision from a feeling standpoint. So this comes down to is time-tested experience, dispassionate wisdom, and earned trust. And that's the relationship that takes place for you to make really clear and smart decisions about your money. So until next time, enjoy.